Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and there is no question that AI chatbots are here to stay. They are definitely the trend of a couple years ago. They're just getting more and more powerful by the day. So that's why we're looking at today is something called Chat RTX. Now, this is a demo that was released by NVIDIA. I think it was about six months ago, the first release, and an update came just last week. Uh, this is a completely free thing to check out if you want to go ahead and do so. And now what we're going to do is explain exactly why I'm covering Chat RTX. Now, what this is all about is it allows you to run large language models, so, you know, ChatGPT. That's the kind of idea behind this, but you're running them locally on your own machine. Now, you've been able to do this for a couple of years now. This entire technology stack is pretty much open source. You can train your own language models. The thing is, it's not easy. Now, there are alternatives to chat RTX out there that I will cover at the end of this video. I'm not an AI guy, and I failed when I tried in the past. What I liked about chat RTX is it was really easy to use. Now, this is Windows only, and you do need to have NVIDIA hardware to make it work, but what you can do is actually search into your own files. Also, it's got something called Rag, uh, which is retrieval augmented generation, which is kind of a fancy way of saying uh, it does a sanity check by searching the web for the results it's giving you. Uh, you can also search into your images if you install a specific model. But the key thing behind this one, the big reason why I particularly like it, it's quite simply the fact it's a download link. You download, you double click the installer, and you're up and going. You can configure new language models really easily, as we will see in a second. Requirements are an RTX 30 or 40 GPU or an older generation with at least eight gigabytes of RAM. So I think if you have like a 20 80 uh, with eight gigabytes of RAM, you should be able to run this as well. As an example, uh, it is 12 gigabytes in size to download. So it is a bit of uh, an involvement here, but this is what it looks like. So let me just zoom this in a little bit. And the key thing here is this guy over here. You can actually train it on your own data. And that's kind of the key thing to it. You also have the ability to select multiple different AI models out of the box. It comes with Mistral 7B Int4. Again, I am not an AI specialist, uh, so I can't really tell you which one to use, which is the best option out there, but you can add new models there. Clip is the option for if you want to search into images. You've got Google's newest thing, Gamma here as well, Llama 2, Chat GLM. Which one is the best one for you to use? I don't know. Again, not an AI guy. But what this enables you to do is your typical ver querying of chat RTX. So um, if you want to ask a question such as, uh, how do I create a sprite 2D in GD script in Godot. All right, so you go ahead, you ask the question, you can also use voice prompts to do so right here. And of course it goes out and searches for the results. Nothing really magical here. It's no different than if you were working with chat GPT. Now there are a couple of major differences here as well though, is number one, it's local. So this is all running on of my local, uh, I have a 4090 mobile chip set. It's all running locally on my machine. Uh, the other thing is it's completely free, but the key part is it's completely configurable. I'll show you that in a second. It's also really easy and you can get multiple models as you can see right here. You basically just click and install it and the other language model is here. So this just makes it uh, so you can have your own set of files that you trust and query into. So you're seeing here the results here after I did this search it's giving you the referenced file and it's saying Godot engine uh, on Linetti, Ariel Manzer, et cetera. Well, this is because I actually took the entirety of Godot's documentation. It's available as an EPUB. I took it down and converted it into a PDF and I published it into the training data. Now training data is very simple. Basically it is a document with, or a folder or a hierarchy of folders with your stuff in it. It could be images. You could actually search for your particular file here. But as you can see, I have the Godot documentation here as a PDF file. I also took a bunch of books that I downloaded off of uh, purchase from Humble in the past. And that's actually kind of what's cool with this. If you've got a particular topic that you learned in the past, or you've got books that you've want that you haven't necessarily read yourself, well, you can have this read them for you and use it as a reference. So let's, for example, grab the 3D math primer for uh, game programmers. This is a PDF, again, available from a previous, uh, I bought it in some humble bundle. Uh, this is an excellent book, by the way, if you get the chance to pick it up. And I'm going to very targeted to ask a question. So I'm going to ask for how do I find the closest point on a 2D implicit line? All right. So now uh, let's go ahead and shut this down. Spoiler. All right, here we go. So now I'm going to ask another question. By the way, I can do follow up questions uh, just like you can with the chat. So there is a chat history. You can follow it up with something else. But now I'm going to ask for a very specific question and it's going to go through the training documentation I gave it 
and then find me an answer. And then what you're noticing here is that particular source is being used. That is the key thing about working locally is you can feed it your collection of books. So you can feed it a bunch of things in PDF format or text format or also a variety of images and have it use that as the data set. So you can have this basically be your own little summary tool for the stuff that you have local. Now it's not perfect by any means. Um, the integration is yeah. So right now, if I wanted to move it over to my code editor, I click copy, bring it over to the code editor and go from there. Uh, but it is again, entirely local. It's free. It's easy to set up. You can give it your own training data. It's this part that makes it most useful to me is I can take on specific topics I'm most interested in and it will search into them. So again, you could do something like grab the documentation for your engine of choice, convert it into a PDF file and train it on that. And it's all happening locally on your machine. So uh, if you've got documents you obviously don't want to share with the world, because a lot of times something like ChatGPT on a pro level, you can actually upload your own training material into it, but you're uploading it into their cloud. And there are definitely some ramifications there. Now, the flip side, when you use something like ChatGPT or Copilot or whatever, uh, you're running it on their supercomputers as opposed to your local machine. But I found the results here are decent. Uh, the performance here is fine. It takes a little while for it to train in the first place. Other than that, not much else required. There are some settings here, but nothing much. So you could delete the models here. The other really impressive part is how much it managed to shrink down these models. So I've got the Mistral model down to four, four gigabytes. But again, you want to bring your own model in. So if you want to search into um, text files, downloading a model is... Oh click the license, download the model, and then boom, it brings a new model in for you. So it's all in one place. Same thing with the installer. The installer is literally a double click and go. So you don't need to know much to use this guy. Now, this isn't the only option out there. It's just, this is a project that um, NVIDIA has been working on. And if you happen to have NVIDIA hardware, it's completely free to go ahead and check this guy out. Uh, it is also an open source project of sorts. So the um, chat RTX isn't open source, but it's built on this project, which is open source. So this is a del um, developer developer reference for RAG or retrieval augmented generation using tensor RTL long, large language models on Windows. So this is the project from whence the other project was created. I don't know how much special special sauce there is beyond this one, but if you're interested and you want to work with a full open source project, this is an option for you. Now I said to start this video off, I am not a big AI person. That's why I like this kind of a turnkey solution. I like the idea of not giving Copilot or ChatGPT my money. And I also like the idea of keeping all of it locally. And I also like the idea of training it with my own data in a safe way. So that is the appeal here, but there are other options out there, none of which I have used, by the way. So I'm just going with some of the most popular options that are available. Another one you might want to be aware of is LM Studio. It's another way of running local large language models. Uh, so it's, this one is also, the key difference here is if you saw what I did today and you think, I want to check that out, but I either don't have NVIDIA or I'm not running Windows. Well, this guy will run on uh, M1, M2, M3 series Max, as well as on Linux uh, in beta format. So I don't know what the beta aspect of it is, but this is a local version of it. So you can run uh, your local language models completely on your machine, entirely offline. Uh, so that part is quite nice. And you can download any of the large language models off of Hugging Face. I haven't used this specifically. Uh, this was based off the Llama CPP project, uh, but I, again, I have no personal experience. I just know this is the same sort of thing. This is the most popular one out there as far as I can understand from my limited research. I'm going to check it out in the future. And then the other one that's out there is Jan. Now, this is kind of the same thing. Now, the key thing about Jan is this. So if you're all about the open source, uh, you can do the same thing that you can uh, with these other two tools, such as LM Studio. It's just this is a 100% open source project. Uh, so again, gives you the ability to run. This is the exact same model we just ran earlier on, the, the Mistral Instruct 7B. Uh, you can go ahead and download things directly, uh, run everything locally, train it yourself as well. So there are other options out there. I'm just going with chat RTX because quite frankly, I tried it out. It was really easy to use. Uh, it got up and running. It was really easy to train it with my own data set. And I actually saw some genuine use for this guy. So I figured I'd share my experiences. So again, not an AI expert. And if you are an AI expert and you're cringing about stuff I said, 
Sorry, I just don't care that much, to be honest. I, I like a tool that works. This is a tool and it worked. It was easy. And I also showed you some alternatives out there. So if you don't like this idea or the, you don't fit the specs for it, maybe check out one of those other options. So maybe if you're paying for ChatGPT now and you have a beefy enough GPU, you may not have to pay for it. You may find the local results are good enough and it enables you to do some things that are trickier or less safe to do with the subscription-based systems that are out there. So ladies and gentlemen, that is NVIDIA Chat RTX and making your own local chat buddy. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.